Hello everyone, welcome to this month's group fitness report or fitness report. We're speaking today all about independent providers. And I'm so grateful for Billy Polson to be here today. He is the founder of Diacati Fitness Performance Life and all of the personal trainers who work there are independent providers. So we'll speak to the two sides of the coin where you may have, you may be working with employees, their personal trainers or group fitness instructors who are employees, they're, you know, they're a W-2 employee, and then you're overseeing them who are also overseeing their business. And then I'm actually coming from the space now that I work with a company that's based across the United States and works with independent contractors. So there's a big difference in what you can and cannot do with those types of providers. Billy's going to speak to more employee, but independent provider. And I'll mention a few things about independent contractors as we go. But the really interesting thing about that business model that I'm excited to approach. And as we have come out of the pandemic, we're finding more and more personal trainers, group fitness instructors interested in doing their own thing and, you know, kind of feeling a bit more autonomous, having that, that more control over their business and their clients. And how do you lead those people? How do you lead those people who love being independent, who want a lot of control, but also need to understand that they're a part of a bigger picture, they're a part of a team, and that they that you're there to help? How do you help them? How do you provide resources in a way that's not too hands-on, that it turns off those types of, of providers? So my first question for Billy, since he has so much experience with this, is what are your top strategies for setting expectations as you bring on potentially new coaches to your team? Yep, definitely. So I'll do like a, a little 30 second kind of rewind. So we started Diacati in 2004. Um, both my husband and I were independent trainers at that time in another like small facility in the city. And so honestly, our goal for starting Diacati was to not to to be this micromanaging boss and have all these people that we had to like uh babysit basically we wanted to gather together this group of advanced level folks that knew how to run their own ship and were really excited to honestly be in this kind of knowledge sharing community so that's what diacati is so we have uh just under 50 independent personal trainers. So they're not 1099, right? They're just uh, running it, uh, their practice out of our facility. It's almost like they're renting a chair at a hair salon. So um, for us, in terms of like setting those expectations, 100%, it has to happen on the onboarding and in the interview process. Um, uh, it's so much easier to take the time and really screen people up front and set those expectations for them than it is to have them get in and then have to like either get them in line or get them back out. So one of the, the most successful things that we've done, uh, and we kind of built this over the last, uh, what, 19 years, um, is our six part interview process. And that really, it gives us so many touch points with them. It's, it's definitely an investment of time up front, but it really, one, you only get folks who are very serious about wanting to come in. It's not an easy entrance to get them in or for them to come in. So that really helps a lot. But the touch points are, we basically go through like an, an in-person interview, but then they treat me as a brand new client where they actually send me all their paperwork and their, their forms. And then they spend an hour assessing me on the floor. Then they write a program for me. They share that with me. And the last step is a, a shadow session where they train one of their own clients and I shadow them. So all those steps really gives us great opportunity to, to kind of show them what we're looking for, but also to learn what they're doing now and to give them some good advice on how to kind of upgrade or boost their program to where we're hoping all of our, our in-house practitioners will be. That is awesome. And during that process, you're providing feedback as well mm -hmm. on how they're performing and what they're doing. And do you take inventory on like their rela their reaction <laughs> to that feedback? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. That, that's part of the test too. It's like, yeah, are they open to, are they, I always say we look for folks who are really high confidence, but really low ego. Mm -hmm. So are they able to kind of keep their ego in check and realize they don't know everything? And yeah. are they truly coming to you because they want to upgrade like who they are and what their business is like? Um, and throughout that process, it, 
for anyone out there, if you have things that are so important to you in terms of the expectations and kind of the standards that you want your folks to meet, Mm -hmm. um, I recommend really creating kind of a system in your onboarding process that guarantees that you drive that home. Like I'll give the example. We have something called the Diakati Community Code Agreement. And uh, it's basically, uh, it's, it's our philosophy around the open hearted, um, welcoming, inclusive environment that we've created at Diakati for our trainers and for our clients. And so what I did was I filmed a series of four videos where I talk about our philosophy on that and kind of how we support that and who we're looking for in our, in our facility. And then I incorporated those into a type form questionnaire. So all of our new trainers, they are required to go through and watch those videos. And there's some like kind of not goofy, but there's some very easy to answer questions after each video just to make sure they watch them. But that was a perfect way for us to guarantee that we made sure that they they understood who we are. They understood who we're looking for to join our community. And they really buy into that before they come in. I love that. I love that. And we're going to talk so much about your resources later because I just appreciate so (laughs) much of the resources and education you give your team. Um, and congratulations on 19 years. Holy. Oh cow. my gosh. Like Thank you so, so much. Incredible. And I, um, I have to do a little shout out. We just, so, uh, we've been voted 17 of those 19 years. We've been voted either the best trainers or best gym. We just got the 2023 best gyms in San Francisco. So yeah, we're, we're psyched. Thank you so much. <laughs> so incredible. It's so incredible. Um, so how do you go about providing feedback? You kind of spoke about like the training or the onboarding process, but once you've brought them onto your team, you've begun to trust them, you've begun to get, help them find clients, you know, work with them on their business. How do you provide feedback to them? Yeah, we, one of the things that we kind of explained to them up front is we, we've created this kind of branch of our education that we call the business movement. And it, we explain to them up front that that's a benefit that they will receive by bringing their business in house is that they will get education on how to become a better business owner. So we've kind of explained that to them up front. So then as they come in, as they are receiving referrals from us and kind of being a, becoming more of a part of our community, um, we are offering that business movement feedback as a benefit to them. So even though it is something where they, they have to kind of be open to hearing that feedback, we're selling it as this is our way of helping you earn as much money as you want, grow your practice as big as you want, uh, have the freedom of time as much as you want. Like we're selling it as a benefit, but it allows us to kind of have that open door from day one where we can uh, have meetings meetings with them each year um, where usually a staff member would definitely have something like that. As an independent um, renter of our space, we're doing that same type of thing and doing it as a way of, uh, again, it's a benefit as opposed to something they're required to do. I love that. And working with specifically independent contractors, 1099 employees, we have team meetings, but I have to make them completely optional because Mm -hmm. I'm not paying them for their time during that time. So exactly. I I love that you say that. So you're already setting the expectation in the onboarding process, and then you're treating it as if it's a benefit, which it really truly is Mm. because who gets that on their own? Like You have to really invest in that and pay for that constantly. And I'm sure you're learning from every coach and they're, you know, teaching you as a leader what, how to be even better and have great ideas. So yep. it just can create this collaborative environment with that education as set as that expectation. So For sure. I love that. I love that. Um, and in this case, yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to no. interrupt. Uh, no, go ahead. You know, there's one other thing that is is kind of, uh, it's been a little bit of a golden ticket for us in providing feedback and kind of continuing to raise everyone's bars. So when you are invited to come into Diakati and bring your own clients in, you're kind of like, that's like tier one. As folks are have been with us and they've uh, kind of uh, really kind of grounded their practice at Diakati, we will invite folks to become a part of our referral program where we'll actually provide them with new clients. Because we, we get a lot of, like, we get about 60 to 70 clients a month looking for a trainer. And so we'll match them. So being a part of that referral program is almost kind of this, it, it's not a guarantee. It's, it's a benefit that we can offer to them as well. So we can, 
not to make it sound negative, but we can kind of hold that over their head a little bit yeah. and say like, so if you want to continue receiving referrals, mm -hmm. we are requiring that you have a website. We're requiring yeah. that you have a scheduling software, like whatever we want to try and use as a way of, again, it's a benefit because we'll help them build it, but it's also can be, become a requirement in order to receive those benefits, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. That's brilliant. That's so, 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 so brilliant. Um, and with that um, environment that you create among your team, I'm sure, hopefully you haven't run into this, but if you do, how do you help them understand that, like we spoke about earlier, they're part of something greater than themselves. They're, you know, a part of a team. They are working within a business, in their own business. But how do you make sure that they're supporting each other, that they're working around each other? I'm sure in the space, sometimes there's, you know, working in and working around each other. And, and what does that kind of look like? How do you set that environment, that collaborative environment? Yep, for sure. Again, it, it's from day one, right? Explaining that high confidence, low ego. Also, um, as they onboard, uh, they get kind of a staff manual, even though they're not staff members. Part of the staff manual is, again, really setting expectations of uh, it, these are the guidelines and these are the protocols. These are how we kind of run the facility and letting them know if they aren't met, then, you know, we'll meet with you and we'll talk to you about it. Uh, kind of having maybe a three strikes system, like if you are consistently late, you get a warning and then you get a suspension and then you're no longer late. like having all those kind of guidelines put in place, even though they're not staff, you, you can still do that for folks that are renting your space as well. But I will say it, it is really important to know the team of folks that you do have in house. And in terms of getting their buy-in with like becoming part of a team and being part of a community, I, I'll be totally transparent that a lot of our folks, they they came to Diakati because they didn't want to have to uh, do all those additional staff meetings at Equinox and they didn't want to have to go to the bowling parties and blah, blah, blah. So we have a good a number of folks who I, I kind of feel guilty taking away their outside of work time. I want them to spend it with their family and I want them to do that. So we've tried to really learn our community. And in, in order to kind of build that community, we try and do things that would be perfect for them and what, how they're wanting it to go. So instead of like pressuring them to do stuff outside of the gym, we bring the party to the gym. So we have lots of catered lunches. We have like holiday stuff. It's all catered in-house so they can partake in that community stuff on site during their work hours, as opposed to getting them away from their family on the weekend. So I do recommend, and we used to really try like, oh, every weekend we got to do something. And it's just not who we have in house. They don't want to do it. They have kids and families. So think about that. Know your clients and your whoever your renters are or your contractors or whoever they are. And, and really try and don't force them. Really figure out what would be the great way to build community with them and head in that direction. I love that. Yeah, I've really had to learn because I've come from the space of like an equinox where you're in a luxury health club and you have all these team meetings and requirements and and, you know, monthly team meetings, which come come around so quickly. Yeah. And I think the tools that you can use, like technology and like you said, having in-house ha having in-house meetings, you mm -hmm. can record and share that information asynchronously where they can do it on their own. They can do it on their own time when they find the break. And that population of independent provider and independent contractor I've found just really appreciates that freedom. And by giving, it's, it sounds like you've learned along the way, but I think we're able to share that. <laughs> you know, like you said, learn, learn about your, your, your providers so that they, they feel at home with what you, you're providing them. For sure. Um, and, that, and it changes, right? Like, yeah. uh, again, ours really changed pre and post pandemic. Like, uh, yeah what, how people really wanted to interact. Uh, so yeah, it, it's something, it's a constantly, a constant like relearning and just studying and really watching how your community is, is really being attracted to things and really not attracted to something. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, and then when it comes to the resources you've provided, I just want to touch on them one more time. Um, I just remember you've provided business resources and how do you believe that, it has been helpful for your team when you first started building your team and then how has it progressed your business beyond that so beyond mm -hmm. just the team that you have in-house but but what you do outside of diacati as well 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's definitely been something like, so obviously San Francisco is a pretty competitive market. Um, and over the last 20 years, even more competitive in our space in terms of there being a lot of options for independent trainers now. Mm -hmm. So that's one big reason behind what we do is that we want, we really studied who is the typical independent trainer in San Francisco and what are their major needs? What are they really having trouble with? Um, and one of the biggest things, honestly, was uh, growing their practice in such a competitive market, right? Like yeah. there are, I mean, the last time I did like a bulk search on Yelp, there are over a thousand personal trainer listings just on the, the, the introductory search, right? So they're, oh my God, their options are limitless. That doesn't even include all those Equinox trainers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we knew like, okay, we have to build a referral program and uh, a, a easy way to really assist them with growing as big as they want. So that's kind of how it started. But then as we realized, uh, there are so many other steps along the way, like some of the biggest things we help them with now are uh, automating their forms, setting up a, an automatic uh, calendar system or scheduler for at least for their first consultation, if not for their whole schedule. Mm -hmm. So we, as we kind of grew those resources or as we saw a need for them, we slowly built more and more systems and just started kind of like stock holding them together. And it now has become, yes, this really like, again, it's what we call the business movement. It's this uh, resource uh, uh, or sorry, gathering of resources from everything from kind of educational things, teaching you how to do stuff or literally profit loss forms or program tracking forms or uh, like maybe PDFs to show your programs and pricing. So we've built this giant library of those resources that as you become a team member, you gain full access to. Um, and then you also have full access to myself and the, our business movement team to be a private coach and teaching you how to be a better business owner. So all those have kind of like come together in a way that uh, it has become a magnet for trainers who are really experienced at Equinox, but have no idea how to run their own practice. Equinox is getting a big plug during this whole, <laughs> it's, it's the sorry. only other gym out there. <laughs> yeah. I'll use another example next time. But like, yeah, it, it's trainers who have been on staff for a while mm -hmm. and they're trying to really figure out, okay, how do I dive into this giant independent pool? So um, we try and our job is to make that uh, transition and to make that pathway so easy and seamless and not a fear factor type of uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's fascinating to me how the evolution of that resource has happened. And it was inspirational to me when I've been to your sessions and, you know, looked at Diakati's website, look at the fitness business movements websites and, and taken in all of that for the team that I oversee. And we ended up developing a resource page. It's not nearly as magically like put <laughs> together and beautiful as yours, but it, we found that it was a place where I think also these independent trainers um, really want to have just a place where they can go and not have to be handheld through the process. They can, they're not, someone's not looking over their shoulder. They're able to do it on their own. They're able to kind of do it in their own way, which I know um, because everyone, wants to invest in different things because everything like depending on the some of them are free but depending on the software you choose depending on your budget you, you can really get creative with the variety of, of resources you provide the team and it could be related to your business specifically or helping them with their business and then the second hand benefits that you've had from seeing mm -hmm. obviously the team learning from what you provide them but also you learning from them and then it making it less hands-on for you, making it easier for you. And then creating this resource that you can share with the world. It's just, it really has become something so much bigger than it, than it started. So I think that's, that's so cool. <laughs> uh, thank you. And honestly, you mentioned something I think is so important. Um, it, it, like, let's say you have a team, we have, we have about 50, let's say you have a team of 30 coaches or, or, or maybe group exercise instructors. Don't forget to use all of them as a kind of research uh, or lab techs or whatever of all of the things that they've investigated, all the different types of software they've used. Um, and really, I, we, I reach out all the time, it's probably even once a week to our folks in the gym and say, hey, 
what's the latest posture analysis software anyone is using? Yes. And so you're constantly, again, you're just kind of updating what are all the resources that you have for that. Mm -hmm. So definitely lean into the folks that you have in your community mm -hmm. and let them do lots of good research for you as well. You cannot do it all on your own. So, and that helps kind of build that, that vibe of how they, oh yeah, I'm contributing to the whole community because I, I offered my insight on the posture software. So yeah, it, it definitely, again, is an easy way to build that community aspect as well. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Those are all the questions I have for you, Billy. Do you have anything else to say about leading independent providers? You know, for folks that are trying to figure out, because I have had a couple clients recently trying to decide, do I go the staff route? Do I um, do the independent? I've even had a couple of my clients during pandemic literally switched from one or the other because mm -hmm. uh, their business model changed so much. Um, I do, I, I will say like in the end, you really just, a, if, if you were running the facility, you really want to kind of put yourself into check of who do you want to be working with? What is the role that you want to have with them? And I think that will kind of lead you as a first step. And then the next step is really who are the folks that you want in house and how long do you want to keep them? So we have, uh, we have several trainers who've been with us for 19 years and lots of 17 as well. And it's because they are truly able to run as far as they want and charge as much as they want and run their ideal practice with a total support network from us, but a complete freedom in all the community. So um, it's definitely one of those things that it, none of them are wrong or right or better or worse. They're all just very different. It ended up that this was really how we wanted to kind of run a practice and who we wanted in our community. So um, yeah, I just recommend that if you are trying to make that decision, figure out what is the smartest move for your studio or your facility. Um, yeah, you really check yourself and then think about who you want around you. And I think that'll guide your decision in that way. I love that. I appreciate that so much because it really is true. It, neither one is right or wrong and both of them can kind of have an element of, uh, you know, presence in each one. You can mm -hmm. provide, you can provide, oversee really closely your team and then also provide resources and vice versa. You can become less hands-on, but also provide team meetings every once in a while that are optional. So there is, there is give and take and as far as a business goes, knowing yourself really well, I think is, like you said, really valuable and what you're looking for. Um, for sure. Thank you so much again, Billy, for everything and uh, appreciate your time. Uh, for those of you who are watching and enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to the channel. And then I've been moving these actual, the audio from these videos to a podcast as well. So if you prefer to just listen, you can find the podcast on anywhere you get podcasts, as well as I'll introduce the next month's video where I will be speaking with Christopher all about working with instructors and participants with disabilities, how to make sure that we're very, like you said earlier, the culture you've created at Diacati, inclusive, respectful, and provide as many opportunities as possible for that population. So I'm really excited to introduce him um, next month. Thank you so much again, Billy. Thanks, Stacey. Have a great weekend. You we'll too. see you soon.